Hi, this is Dr. Missy Steck, and this brief lecture is on enhancing online courses using technology. And the point here is to look at application level learning in online programs and how to achieve those with technology. The objectives are to look at techniques for integrating technology. And what I really would like for you to do after this assignment is for you to be able to develop one assignment in your course that could be transformed using technology. And then be able to integrate um, the competencies using tech, of using technology in education. So how are you going to continue to integrate these types of technologies in your classroom to better engage your students? I like to start here um, to give some people some perspective about generational technology. And if you see this timeline, we start with a student who was born in 1968. And in 1968, Intel was founded. And as you look through that student's life from age zero to age 23, um, the technology integration was fairly primitive. We had the first video games in Pong. Apple was founded in 1976. When that student was 18, we had our first personal computers. And at 23, the World Wide Web was founded. So for those of you who are in that demographic, you can see like the technology um, while you were in your adolescence. And then here's the, the newer, the new generation of students. And these were students who are going to university now that were born in 1998. And so you can see how quickly the technology has evolved just in their lifetime. Um, at, at age five is when that um, iTunes store was launched. At age 10, they got the App Store. At age 12, their first iPads. And at 17, Apple launched the, iWatch, or the Apple Watch. So the technology has really accelerated in their lifetime. And the point of talking to you about this is that we have to understand the generation of learners that we're working with and their expectation for technology integration um, as they come into a collegiate atmosphere. And we have to um, adapt. And we do know that not every learner learns the same way, but by getting away from didactic and lecture and integrating some um, tactile and and other types of learning experiences will better engage the students that we have. Here are the facts. We know we lose our students after eight minutes of lecture, so I always try to keep my lecture short. Um, and we are considering the next generation of learners like I talked about with the generational technology slides. We do want to try to move past lecture and there are other ways to engage our learners and selective lecturing by experts is never a bad thing. But what we have to do is learn to rein that in and to use those lectures to help stimulate students to think in different ways by doing other kinds of activities. And so one of the things we're considering is how we bridge the gap between what we need the students to learn and how they show us that they've learned it. This is the SAMRA pedagogy wheel. Um, it's, a, it's updated about once a year. And um, as we talk about technology integration along the outside of this wheel, you'll see the SAMRA model. So substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. And the SAMRA model talks about how we integrate technology. Do we use technology as a substitution? Do we use it to augment our content? Do we modify our tasks using technology? Or do we redefine how we do our tasks using technology? And those of you who are educators can look in the center of this wheel and notice that all of the Bloom's taxonomy words are there. So what this wheel does is it brings together the SAMRA model for technology integration with Bloom's taxonomy, and then it adds potential apps that you could use to help integrate technology at your level of Bloom's taxonomy. And Bloom's is going to look different at the baccalaureate level, at the master's level, and the doctoral level. Um, and so this gives you a good starting place. As we look at techniques, I want you to take a break for a second and think about learning activities in your classroom. And I'd like for you to first consider the assignment that you give your students that you dislike the most. I find that the easiest assignments to change are the ones that you don't like. And so I tell people, pick the thing you like the least and let's figure out how we can change it. 
What you need to do with that assignment then is decide what you're trying to achieve in terms of Bloom's taxonomy. Are you trying to get them to remember something? Are you trying to get them to evaluate it? Would you like them to create? And if you understand the level of Bloom's taxonomy, then looking at how you can change the assignment looks a little easier. And so you can go back to that wheel and start with the SAMRA model. Are you going to substitute, augment, modify, or redefine? And then one of the great things about technology is it really lets you elevate the level of your assignment. So in the past where you may have only want the student to remember something, which is sort of low level Bloom's taxonomy, as you move around the wheel, you can use technology to sort of up level your assignment or even your course. I'm going to give you several examples, I think three or four, in the context of this lecture of things that we did in our program that um, we absolutely were able to transform using technology. And the first one we're going to start with was the role paper that we write for the DNP. And so initially the students would come to the DNP program and take roles in their first semester. And in that class, we asked them to write a paper about why they were there, what they wanted to do how they um, plan to make a change, how they plan to integrate what they learned in the DNP in professional practice. And um, I was just tired of grading it. And it was a five page paper, everybody's paper sounded the same, and I wanted something different. So I went to the SAMRA model and I just decided that I totally wanted to redefine what I was doing with my students. And instead of having them just demonstrate what they were gonna do, which is low level, blooms. I wanted them to actually create something that helped me understand what they plan to do with their DNP in their professional practice. And so I went and I looked um, at the concept of TED Talks. And I thought, how could I give my students the ability to do a TED Talk and for me to be able to get the information I need out of them? So I wrote a rubric that had a set of questions in it and the students had two minutes to articulate the answers to the questions and they could use um, any movie app. The student that I'm gonna show you used iMovie, which is an iPad app, but there are several apps for other devices or you can use um, the video camera on the laptop or on the any kind of tablet to record video. and. Um, the result was pretty amazing and spectacular and the students had a lot of fun doing it and I got to know the student not just by what their project was but who they were and what their ideas were and how creative they were and we, we moved to a very high level of Bloom's taxonomy. So the next slide is an example from a student on that particular um, assignment and I think that you'll really enjoy um, what she um, is able to accomplish in this in the context of the assignment. If you asked ask me a year, a year ago, ago why, why I would I pursue the DMP, my reply would have been good question. question. However, However, as Gandhi, as Gandhi said, said, be the change you wish to see in the world. world. We have billions, billions of dollars, dollars pouring into research, research each, year. each year. New drugs, new, drugs, new instruments, instruments, new treatments, new, treatments, new protocols. New protocols. Yet, Yet a gap, a gap exists, exists between patients, patients resources, resources, and education. And education. The doctor of nursing practice bridges this gap, gap bringing, bringing the science into the hands of the patient and providing, providing the education, education to utilize it. And it, it isn't, isn't just, just patient, patient education, education the DMP will provide. provide. It, is it is empowerment, empowerment to the nurse. The, the DMP will develop leaders with the knowledge to affect health care policy and reform. reform. Nurses, nurses who will stand, stand at the, the forefront in hospital administration, administration independently leading practice offices, offices global, global health care reform, reform, and as mentors, mentors imparting change, change every, every single, single day, day, incorporating, incorporating theory, theory, physical, physical and psychological, psychological sciences, sciences, simulation, and telehealth, and telehealth with the profession, the profession of, nursing of nursing to optimize patient outcomes. outcomes. So, so why, why the DNP? Because, because I don't I want to be stagnant. stagnant. I want I to be the change I wish to see in childhood obesity. I want, I want to take, to take nursing, nursing to the next, to the next level, level, making an impact, impact on the health and wellness of others, others. Working, working with multidisciplinary multi teams, teams to optimize, optimize programming for nutrition, nutrition health, health, and physical, physical activity, activity for children, for children. Overcoming, overcoming the barriers, barriers and bringing prevention, prevention to the forefront of health as we, as we fight, fight against the childhood obesity, obesity epidemic, epidemic and the risky, risky obesity cycle. cycle. We, cannot we cannot rest on the laurels of our past. We must continue to move forward, creating a future where childhood obesity does not exist. A world, a world where access, access to healthy foods, preventative, preventative care, care, and the incorporation, and the incorporation of, daily of daily activity is the norm, 
rather than the exception. And while I am just beginning on the path of impact in my d and pursuits, you can bet the leading footprints of healthcare will belong to a doctorate of nursing practice prepared nurse. So as you can see, this is a really great example of how you can get away from having a student write a paper and instead engage in a more creative outlet for accomplishing an assignment. And especially for online students, this gets, allows the faculty to get to know the student and also tells the student that the faculty is interested and that it's um, more than just an academic exercise in terms of, um, of writing a paper. So here we are back to the SAMRA model. And you can see up in the purple section, I wanted to use redefinition. And I um, went to my Bloom's level of create. And so we used iMovie, which is in that area. There are other things that you can use. Prezi's in here, which is device agnostic. And um, WordPress, VoiceThread, there's all kinds of different ways um, to do this create piece, especially in high-level master's and doctoral level programs. So here's the next exemplar. And this exemplar is um, an activity where in our research course, we tended to give lectures on each type of evidence-based practice. And as you know, um, lecturing on theoretical and practice models is not that exciting. And so I wanted to let the students become the teachers. And so when I went to the SAMRA model, I was looking for mod using technology to modify how I had done um, my lectures in the past. And as I redeveloped the assignment, I decided that I was going to use student curated content, which means that instead of me lecturing to the students, I gave the students the resources that they needed. And then I allowed them to be creative in showing me how they understood the material. And what we did with this, with this example is we curated all of the students' work into one book where the students could then use it as a reference. And so each group of students students um, covered content each week for seven weeks and then we put all the content together and pushed it out to the, all of the students so that they would have it. But the result was that the students had to learn the material in order to curate the content and um, again it gave them a way to learn it that wasn't just listening to someone lecture about it. So here's the example. And um, this is the Paris Framework for Evidence-Based Practice. And this was created by the students. This is an infographic using pictochart.com, which is free and device agnostic. So you can use it on Apple or PC. And um, they tell you, they walk their way through the um, research implementation model of Paris. Um, and the three main components of evidence, context, and facilitation. So in one quick snapshot, it's visually stimulating, and you can see that they understand the Paris framework and how to use it, where it's appropriate, and um, it gives a brief definition. And this is um, a really great way for the students to show that they understand it versus me standing up and lecturing in the classroom. So going back to the SAMRA model again, I used modification, which is in the bottom left-hand corner, and we really wanted them to be able to analyze the content and evaluate it. And so if you um, look under analyze, which is yellow, there are words like demonstrate and distinguish and differentiate. So those are the words we used a lot with um, this particular modification. And there are some apps here that you can use, Poplet and Comic Life. And if you move into the Evaluate, you've got Shareboard and Notability. Um, I used Pictochart, which is another app that can be used in that modification area. So the next exemplar um, was a discussion board. Um, I know that we use discussion boards on online learning because they take the place of our on-site discussions when we have students in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, but what happens with online discussion boards is students don't feel engaged. And I, um, I wanted them to be able to demonstrate that they understand the concepts that we're talking about. And so 
the assignment was that um, I needed the students to find a problem in practice and then I wanted them to find an informatic solution to solve that problem. And so with that, um, we wanted to sort of redefine and evaluate and analyze their particular solution to that problem. And so as I redeveloped this um, paper and discussion that we had done traditionally, I really wanted them to like show me, like tell me what the problem is, show me what your evidence-based informatics solution is, show me how it is that you're going to um, implement that solution and then tell me how it's going to improve outcomes or decrease cost or improve satisfaction. So all of those, that triple aim of healthcare. So what we did is we gave the students Prezi to be able to show us how they were going to implement their informatics tool in practice. So really it makes the students integrate the concept beyond just knowing about it. So not only are you going to know about the problem, but you have to be able to also show the solution, how the solution is implemented, and what the outcome and impact are. So the next slide is going to show you a Prezi. There's a link that you can click on that will take you to the Prezi, and you can click through it. So this is a Prezi on um, anesthesia provider awareness in the OR. And so if you use this link, you can, um, here is the example Prezi on decreased anesthesia provider awareness. And if you click on the link below, you'll be able to go out to Prezi and, and view this presentation. And you'll see how the students have laid out the problem, the informatic solution, the implementation, and the impact. And it's a great example of how we've gotten away from discussion board and papers and into, please create this so that you can show me how you understand the concepts that we've been learning in class. Um, Prezi is device agnostic, so you can use it on um, iPad or tablet or PC or Apple, it doesn't matter. So we're back to the SAMRA model, and the SAMRA model here, where we were um, over here in remember and understand, with this new assignment, we've been able to go back to create. And create then is not only do you remember and understand and can apply the concepts we learned in informatics, but now you can create something that shows us that you um, have integrated all of the concepts throughout the semester. Some things that you should consider when you're looking at technology and how you can engage online learners is what are your program objectives and how are you meeting those through your curriculum and how can you um, elevate what you're doing in your online curriculum and meet your program objectives using technology. Um, you also want to consider as you're working through your online programs, what your accreditation standards are and um, what the competencies are that the students need to meet prior to graduation. And then, you know, a big part of this is what is your organization or your university or college mission, vision and values? And are those um, conducive to being able to have a technology friendly environment and written in a way that engaging your students um, in an online environment using technology really matches with what you're doing within your organization. And then I do have an iTunes U course. Um, iTunes U is an app that can be used for iPad or iPhone. It is not device agnostic. It is only for um, iPhone or iPad. But if you use this enrollment code that I've listed, I have an entire course on how we transformed certain assignments in the doctoral program using technology. And I've included some relevant examples and some rubrics and exemplars of student work. So if you're really interested in how you can transform some of your learning activities within your online classes to um, being technology centric or more engaging, you can use this iTunes U course as um, sort of a springboard or a platform for you to get some ideas about moving forward with, um, with those kinds of transformations. And finally, you know, here's your opportunity now. I want you to brainstorm your classes, figure out what you want to change, 
Look at the technologies that are available to you. Look at the level of engagement that you have with your students. Um, I know all of you have students that suffer from disinterested student syndrome and, you know, they're never going to be engaged in your courses, but potentially with the integration of some active learning strategies and, um, and some technology and some, you know, shift from traditional educational methods to some more innovative methods, you'll see that your students do become more engaged and they're more excited and, um, they're really, um, into being able to create things and show you how they have learned in your courses. So get to work, brainstorm your courses, and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.